Folks, if you'd like to see the soldiers eat their dinner, my parents visited the fort today and they were joking around with some of my colleagues about me marching around in our backyard with a flag wearing my, my dad's high socks <laughs> to kind of imitate uh, what a soldier in the Revolutionary War looked like. I guess it's always just been with me. Locally, we had some local reenactors that I kind of uh, hooked up with, and then uh, from there, I got more and more involved into uh, better units, more authentic units. All of our clothing, for example, are made right on site. It's all hand-stitched, uh, fit for the person, including our shoes. All of our ironwork, our axes and tools that we use are all handmade out of the right materials. It's all hand-forged. You know, it's small details, but uh, we really encourage that authenticity, and with that authenticity, all the research that goes along with it. Through two great wars and five great battles that happen here, the men who come here fighting for their king, for their country, for their liberty, for their freedom, come here for one main reason, and they're brought here because of this peninsula's geographical significance on a very important waterway system. Now this we, in our regular demonstrations throughout the day, we try to stay very specific to a very specific time in history, uh, always changing it up and keeping it fresh for the visitors who come. Two. Cover your arms. One, two. One, two. Make ready. One, two. Present. Four! This year we're doing uh, Colonel Hinman's regiment, the 4th Connecticut Regiment that are drafted out of their local militias in Litchfield County, Connecticut, sent up here to Garrison Fort Ticonderoga in 1775. What we're going to be diving into very soon is our soldiers, uh, the regular enlisted men's meal, very typical of what the regular common soldiers would be eating. Every year we change up our interpretation, and with that, we have to continuously do research. I never find it challenging. Uh, actually, I find it more challenging to get out of the 18th century, so to speak. Uh, in, my, in my daily life, I really struggle with separating myself from my hobby and my job uh, and just trying to be normal. <laughs> it's come to the point where I, you know, dream my musket demonstrations and dream <laughs> my uh, tours, uh, which isn't a bad thing. It keeps me on my toes, I guess. And they train their muskets and fowlers on the windows and doors of the barracks buildings, waiting to be fired down upon, waiting for the defense of this fort. They wait, and wait, and nothing happens. They then rush into the barracks buildings, grabbing the British soldiers who they find still putting their clothes on. They grab this is definitely what I want to do as my career. Um, and I, I'm, what I'm really interested in doing is bringing something new to the table in, in living history, getting people to really submerse themselves into what these people 200 years ago really felt, what they really experienced. Not, you know, this is a musket, this is how it works, but, you know, how did this dictate things? How did these men actually think in that time? People come up to me, older people and younger people, saying that they've learned more in my tour than they've ever learned in school. And that's very reassuring to me that this is where I should be to educate people. And I enjoy doing it, so uh, why not continue that way? You spending your hard-earned money here at Ticonderoga keeps us open for future generations, keeping with our mission of preservation and education. So thank you folks for coming here and thank you for taking the tour.